Hello, everyone. Today on the show, I got Carl Bugea with me. He is the guy that builds PCB motors of nothing more than PCBs and magnets. So let's welcome Carl. Hi. Hi. Now I think. Welcome. Okay. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Wow. Um, I watched your videos and uh, it was so impressive how you build uh, PCB motors out of nothing more than just PCBs and, and magnets. Thank you. Right. Thank you. So um, I'm very curious uh, to know uh, more about it. And uh, you mentioned you have more projects that you're working on. So uh, yes, I, I think we have a lot to talk about during during this uh, call. I think so. So uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit more about about you and what you do. So I am basically an electronics engineer from Malta. Um, it's a tiny island um, in the middle of Europe. Um, mm -hmm. I graduated in 2016 from University of Malta and around two years later I decided to sort of start my YouTube channel and st I experimented with the PCB motor during that time um, and that's how it basically got started. Before then um, I, w I had a startup with my friend. Um, I mentioned this story in my YouTube videos, but um, it was totally a failure and we're making a small drone. And that's, that's mainly how the PCB motor idea came about. That's how it got started um, from that failed experience, basically. So what was the idea to build a drone out of PCB motors? That, that, that was the idea, but um, it sort of... Um, it's sort of not completely possible uh, where, where I am right now. I don't think it's possible, but that's how it got started. Um, I, I was finding a way to simplify drones, basically. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what happened there? Um, I haven't watched uh, the video where you mentioned that. So I'm, uh, okay. I'm completely unaware uh, so, where you okay. got stuck in the end. So, so you were trying to build this. Was it the... Was it the torque you were getting out of the motors that wasn't enough to lift the drone? Yes, yes. So basically, the motor does not currently they they, they do not does not have enough torque to um, rotate a propeller um, to, to get it to, to that speed that a drone needs to, to for liftoff, basically. Yeah. Right. So, so th these are small but, motors that are more suitable for precision work than. Uh, uh, sort of than, than flying a drone, right? Um, I, I, I have another application in mind because currently I, I'm thinking about starting to design a small um, wheeled robot with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in my last video, I teased it a little bit, um, but I, I'm still going. I mean, I'm, I'm, the, the robot is still in sort of in the design phase. I'm still brainstorming about it. Um, but um, they can be used for precision work. I, I have another project, another motor um, that I'm working on also that is a stepper motor. So the motors I have developed right now are brushless motors, they are six pole. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm currently working and testing out my, I, I mean, I, I designed the PCB and received it. Mm -hmm. I still have to test it, but I'm playing around with sort of micro stepping as well. Right. I think that that will be interesting and more useful for precision work or, I mean, it, it will still be low torque, obviously, but um, I mean, for something like a clock or a gauge, it will be perfect, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I've seen I've seen some applications of, uh, of PCB motors uh, where uh, they can be used, for example, to turn, uh, turn a gauge uh, or turn a um, potentiometer. Um, on a on a control panel, which can be turned manually as well as electronically. So, people have been kind of applying it to uh, to electromechanical uh, things that don't require too much torque, I guess. Yes. Can you show this new project that you're working on? Uh, you're able to share the screen, so you should be able to just uh, click the share. Uh, so currently, I'm in a new place, so I'm still sort of moving out, but I can share some posts, maybe on, I have some pictures on it on Instagram and yeah. I don't know if that work. Do you want to do it now? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so um, how did you get the idea of um, making motors out of PCBs? 
So the idea, like I said, started from me wanting to try to simplify a drone. So basically a drone right. is, is made up from um, the, the chassis, uh, motors, batteries, electronics, and propellers. So I, I was sort of playing around with the idea, what if we could join those parts together? There, mm -hmm. there were already some drones on the market that, that were sort of have the chassis from, made from a PCB those tiny drones i don't know if you ever watched saw them yeah 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 i know, I know the, the so, little the, yeah yeah little small ones yeah. so th that's that's how the idea got started then i i saw um so b before um after making the the PC motor and um, some some viewers um highlighted that PC motors there there have been already some company that developed um some some prototypes that use them for lawn mowers um, there's also an article on Hackaday on this subject. Um, th that's very interesting. They developed it like, I don't know, 15 years ago, something like that. And um, so my PCB motor was not actually the first prototype. Um, but before, before sort of um, developing my, my concept, I, I, I did not know this. Um, what I saw, um, if you write PCB motors on YouTube, there's a company that develops PCB motors made out of um, piezo. So they have tiny piezo um, actuators on the PCB yeah. and they sort of rotate um, the rotor. And I was fascinating, uh, fascinated by that. Um, but it's not technically a PCB motor, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a more uh, of a mechanical motor. Yeah. When, so when you use piezo, it's, it's not the same, exactly. the same thing, right? So then, um, like I said, when we were developing this drone um, in, in my failed startup experience, um, we used, um, um, th this was not uh, an ordinary drone, so it was a coaxial, coaxial drone, and so it, has, it had two propellers, and then it had flaps um, to sort of um, do vector control. Um, so, so we needed an actuator to sort of control the flaps. To control and the, mo the motors, or do you mean the, the propeller? No, no, in, in, the, in, this, in, this, in the specific drone we were using. So this is before I developed the PCB motor. Okay. We're, we're using um, tiny coils to move um, tiny flaps, really small flaps. Mm. So th th there, th this is a, a common product that um, that is on the market. Um, so so um, th there is this sort of um, product um, of an actuator that has this tiny coil and the magnet um, that is used to to control um, really small and lightweight airplanes, um, RC controlled planes. And we're, we're using that concept. And I sort of, um, after this startup experience, I had this idea, what if we, instead of um, using um, a, a coil, the, the coil is printed into the PCB itself. And that, that's wh when I sort of joined the two ideas together to develop the motor. Um, obviously then I, 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 I also experimented with having an individual coil um, as well, um, but the first idea was sort of to join um, the coils together to form a brushless motor. Right, and you were using a, a conventional ESC to control it, basically. Uh, no, I was using custom ESC. Oh, you built that too? Yeah, because um, I had a, I have previously been built um, a low power um, ESC. Um, the, the same thing that I, we were using in in the failed drone startup uh, thingy. So basically, I used I used my work that I did during that time um, to drive the same motors. Um, and then I I, I made um, a, a, pro, a prototype as well that has a custom ESC and the motor itself. Okay. Okay. So so let me show you some pictures. Of what we're talking about, because yeah, I think that, it's, that, it's that would make it from... more uh, visual. Yeah, I have seen that video, the the jigsaw puzzle PCB motor that, yeah. that you published. It was well, amazing how you <laughs> thank you make those tiny parts and then you put it all together into a motor. That that is sort of um, very 
it, it's very similar to existing um, to brushless motors like this one, for example, where, where the coil is sort of facing the magnet. Mm -hmm. um, so. So, so the biggest is, challenge is kind of getting enough turns into the PCB, right? Yeah, that was a that I I mean that was the biggest um, my biggest fear and sort of my biggest worry mm -hmm. um, because I I was not expecting it um, to work. So this was the first um, prototype that I made. Um, I was not expecting it um, to work, or if it works, it it gets way too hot so um that was that but, your expectation or was that yeah that, that was my expectation so yeah. when it when it worked for the first time i i was amazed and um, the temperature was getting around to around 70 degrees if i remember correctly for oh. this one um so it's i mean it's it's hot but motors typically go to some so that, to that temperature so other motors that are off the shelves they get hot so Mm -hmm. I mean, it it, it man, man, managed to 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 work, and um, but but obviously it had it still had some challenges. Um, so basically, what I did to to for this prototype to make sure that um, the the resistance is high enough was to connect to use as a star configuration instead of a delta configuration. Okay. Um, so. Instead of connecting the three phases in, in parallel, they were connected. So uh, the connection starts here, and then uh, it's connected in series to this one. I'm not sure, are you seeing it? Yeah. And then um, it goes to the next phase. So maybe to this one, and then this one, and then it goes. Um, so they are connected in a circle. Yeah, sort of, the, because the way brushless motors work, you have always two phases, powered and one that is undriven. Yeah. Um, so they sort of will, will loop. So, so instead of um, uh, using uh, the conventional configuration of a brushless motor where they are joined in the middle, you are joining them in a, in a triangle. Yes, yes. Yes, so they're joined at the end. No, no, not a triangle, a star. So let me find it. Yeah. Okay. So it will be like this. So this is a, a delta. Yeah. And this is, sorry, this is the delta and this is the star. Okay, so you're using the star, the, the, the ones where exactly, you're exactly. in the middle. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So that, that sort of um, gave me some extra resistance because you have the resistance of one coil and the other when you right. power it. So it made things go less hot as well. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, getting the smallest resistance is um, optimal in a way, but then you have to also um, check that the motor is, is not getting too hot because if it gets too hot, it, it will be useless and it will also damage um, the magnets as well. Um, and what, uh, what um, thickness of the PCB are you using for this? So for the first prototype, um, this one I think is 1.6, I forgot, because this was I think two and a half years ago, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, for the latest version is 0 0.6, so if we go to this version here, this one, um, this is 0 0.6 millimeter thick, thick PCB. This is it. All right. And the, and the copper thickness is uh, standard or the, co the copper the normal? The copper thickness is um, standard. It's one ounce, I think. Right. Uh, you're so, using, uh, I don't have all the details because um, from I have it's hard to remember all the details um, for all the projects <laughs> but I, I think it's one ounce or half an ounce okay 
and you're using you're using all the layers right I, i've seen the video yes, yes i've seen the video below there so how to design a pcb motor that that's probably one of your most popular videos because everybody was sharing yeah. <laughs> uh, and you're actually using all the layers uh on the pcb and and you lead the uh, exactly can you explain a little bit how how you lead the co coils um okay so so how do you want the, the magnetic field to point um to to make this work Okay, so um, basically, um, it it all depends um, when when um, when when you um, considering um, where the, the magnetic fields need to point. You also need to consider the rotor, um, how the magnets will be placed. Um, so basically, you have to use the right hand grip rule um, to to figure out, um, for example. Um, that, that, that the current keeps going around the same way. So, um, like, like I'm showing here, um, I have vias in the middle of the coil and uh, on the edge. So, on on each layer, they will um, pass through. On every, this is a four-layer motor. So, so for example, um, the the top layer um, starts he, here um, from from the edge, and then it goes um, down from the middle via. Then the layer underneath it goes out from the edge, and it keeps going like this. So, so on every layer, the the flow of current should be in line with all the yes. other layers yes right so so you have <clears throat> you have to switch direction somewhere uh, I so, think, right so so that then, you, you get then the since this, these are connected in series um so if this 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 one here is for example um, ha, 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 has a north this one needs to be a south then mm. and and that's that's how the, the magnets will rotate and you have three magnets uh, on the stator or on the rotor, I mean. Yes, I, no, I have four magnets. Four. So here, they, th there will be four magnets. So they, they will basically be in, in between um, the, the coils when, when they okay. get energized. That, that's, that's how it rotates, basically. So then I'm using a six-step commutation waveform um, which um, will basically um, be equal to half a step, or oh, half, half a rotation, sorry. But why are you using four magnets uh, and not, for example, uh, five? Let's say one, two, three, four, or six? Because, because the magnets, um, it, it depends on the six-step commutation waveform that I mentioned. For example, when this one will be north and um, mm -hmm. this one will be south and this one will be empowered and um, so the magnet for example will be one will be here and the other one will be somewhere here okay um so, so it's, it's not it's never going to be sort of uh and that's uh, that's part of the design right so that it's never mm -hmm. aligned with the yes, yes with the spaces in between so exactly. some magnets will be always in the middle between exactly. the four coils. Okay, so so they they can be pushed around with the next step of the commutation, right? Yes. Okay. And it's uh, the strong neodymium magnets that you're using, right? Yeah, and the the, the magnets are are what makes sort of this thing possible because um, the coil's magnetic field is very small, so. You have to, to use the strongest magnets possible. Yeah. So the larger the magnetic field of the magnets, the better the the, the torque will be. So in theory, uh, is it possible to stack uh, stack those coils up and uh, get more torque that way? For example, if you uh, glue two PCBs together or three. So um, I get asked this question a lot. Um, for, it, it depends on the, because if you're going to stack them up, um, it depends on how you're going to connect them as well. If you're going to yeah. connect them in series, it will add up to the total resistance of the coil. So it will 
actually um, it, it, it will make things work worse basically because um, you, you're so, gonna so, get less torque then um, because you, you you're going, it's gonna get hotter I guess mm -hmm. or no no if, if you um, connect um, to res a coil is basically a resistor so if you connect yeah. to a series um, you, you will um, get less current out of it so less current passing through the coils um, so that means um, you either have to power it with more voltage um, or, or it, it, it will um, get less hot and um, have a higher resistance right uh, so, so it's kind of like with the with the normal build DC motor, uh, where you get uh, you, you have this um, consideration to make. Either you have few turns, but with thick wire, and you have more current passing through uh, to get higher speed, or you have uh, lots of turns with more resistance, and you get lower speed. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and so what is the main problem? What is the main um, issue with stacking up um, and maybe connecting them differently then? No, get better I, performance. Like, is it possible to get better performance by stacking them up? That's that's the main question. I think the, the bet, it depends on how you stack them up. If, if you stack them up um, just to want two PCBs together, I don't think it will um, be that beneficial. Um, in, in my opinion, I mean, it's better to have to, to get a six-layer PCB than, um, I don't know, or a four-layer PCB than two-layer um, PCB stacked together. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's also the, the magnetic field strength will also depend on the space between the, the, the layers as well, the, co the copper layers. So that, that will also affect. Um, what I, I see that could um, increase the torque is if you, um, if you make like, you have a rotor, a stator, then you add another layer of magnets there, uh, another um, PCB stator and another rotor. So you, you, will, you will sort of add more magnets there. I think ah. that, that that would would um, and would increase the work. I see. So so it would be a, a multi-layer motor uh, with exactly. in between. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and what obviously um, can increase um, the torque is adding a core inside the the PCB coils as well. Um, I haven't played around with that concept yet, but um, I'm not sure if um, what are the benefits of if it's worth it for my specific projects. Because if you're going to add a core, then um, you obviously have to increase the size of the motor as well. Yeah, I mean, this looks a little bit to me like a, a mini Tesla coil. <laughs> they're all flat, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you have you given any thought of uh, making? Uh, do, do you think it? Do you think it's even reasonable to think of it that way as making it into an induction motor, where you have another coil in the in the rotor, and you uh, have a, like you have an actual uh, copper coil in the rotor that um, where you induce high voltage? Um, I haven't. I never. I never thought of that. No, um, it's an interesting concept. Yeah, I mean, then you're not using magnets; you're using a coil instead. Mm -hmm. But but I mean, in my projects, I mean, I always try to simplify things, um, so so that first of all, they are are everyone can can make these kinds of things. So yeah. uh, these motors are powered with a four to five volt supply. So um, I think that's. A, a, every electronics maker or engineer can can get get to that stage um so i i, I try to simplify th these projects a lot and to make them easier to assemble easier to 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 manufacture and, and assemble as well and when when people uh, get this, you have some kind of starter kit, right, or something that that they yeah. get the ESC, right? 
Uh, not not for the PCB motor, no, for the brushless motor, I don't have a, a kit that, that I sell. I have all the files open source, so everyone um, can, can get these PCBs um, by purchasing them from any manufacturer. But what I sell is the um, flexible actuator. Um, that is, I posted the video of it last month which is this one. So it's a similar thing. It's the, just that it's uh, on a flexible PCB. It's, it's, uh, it's one coil um, on a flexible PCB. Um, it's this um, actuator here. So if, if I show you. Close the head. So it's basically um, a coil um, being driven you can, you can do a lot of fun fun stuff with it. Uh, for example, speaker. Um, th these are some applications that I did. You can use a vibration motor. It's like a, a, a flapping actuator. It's it's really fun, and yeah. I I I managed to 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 make it really cheap by by some. I, I have a video um, which is this one. How I managed to get the price um, at two euros. Mm. So it's that's that's just one coil. So it's it's uh, but in a flexible PCB that they you control it just like any any uh, normal normal. Uh, exactly with a, with a, with an H bridge module basically. So yeah. uh, like a brushless motor. Okay. That's interesting. That that's. Uh, it's a very it's very small actuator, uh, and I, I see you've been using it for a flex light concept yes. as well. Yeah, that so that, that is I think my most popular project. So I'm sort of um, it's it will be I'm I'm currently developing um, a, a new um, concept. Let me find. So this is the it's PCB. Um, so this is the PCB for the third version. So here I, I have 24 LEDs. I'm st I'm st it's still in the development stage. Um, I, I still have to solder the PCB and test it. But uh, and this test will basically um, give me an idea of how how much L how of how many LEDs the coil can flap because I, I, I'm switching to a new, a, a new uh, family of LEDs that are ASIC curated, uh, because in in the last um, in the version two prototype that I made, um, some LEDs were getting damaged um, from flexing them at at around um, 30 hertz. So this will hopefully make things better. Oh, so so you need special LEDs that are not sensitive to being uh, flapped around. I I mean I'm I'm not sure if that is required, but it, it's safer to use LED that have high, have been tested for higher stress levels. Um, that, that's that's my my idea. Right. Because in in the data sheet you don't usually get. Um, how much force and um, can these LEDs withstand? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not made for being yanked around. Exactly, exactly. Right. Cool. Um, so, so what is the main? What was the main issue with the PCB motor besides torque? Um, was it that it was so, it getting hot, or, or was it something else that? Um. Mm, the, in the last um, version that I made, I tackled um, most of the issue. Let me find find it some some better photos of it because the the last video was I think in May I made this so this version here. So this is the latest version, PCB motor version that I made. Um, what I did here is um, sort of ma made, I, I think the, the coils are improved. 
and from from the previous um, model that I made because like I said the piece thickness is now 0 0.6 millimeters thin and um, which which improves things a lot and the coils if if I show you the, the next picture here they are sort of made exactly um to fit uh, the, i mean they cannot get any larger than this they then this area the, the, the i custom um the custom design these coils um how do you make the rotor the rotor i i i milled it using um a milling machine i won um, in a competition um it, it's made from aluminium and then the 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 other improvement that I made is that um, the bearing over here is ceramic, so it's it's rated for higher speeds and also a higher lifetime. Um, I also the magnets that I'm using are rated, are rated for 80 degrees Celsius, um, which my previous magnets um, were not. And I also made um, the shaft um, from from uh, from a connector um, that, that is used to, to mount PCBs with. Okay. So, so what is the what is the torque um, that you can get with this configuration? So, um, I don't remember exactly the numbers. Let me find it. So, this torque is. Let's wait for the end. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. So you have it in some video somewhere, right? The the torque you, you measured it. Yes, yes, I measured it. Uh, but um, the information is all in, in in the video, so. Right, right. So, so if anybody is curious about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, it's the they can watch the video. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. I think it's so, the next one. So, so what the, is the, what is the next step for you then? So, like I said, I'm. I'm currently working on around three projects: the flex LED, the POV display that I just talked about, the stepper motor, um, which is this one. Find it, which is this one here. So this is a four pole. Um, so my plan with this is just to see if I can manage to micro step um, with this motor to, like I said, it would, it, I think it would be very suitable for light like, gauges or clocks. Um, so that's um, my goal for this project. Um, I and still... these are actually coils, right? So, so it's impossible to see on the, on the picture, but they are very tiny wires, right? Yes, they are 0 0.1 millimeters. Um, ten wires. Right. I think I have a better picture of the coils here. Sorry. So, in terms of um, in terms of getting really high resolution um, copper wires, flex PCB is better. You think, right? I, I think so. Yes. I I see. I, I'm seeing a lot of benefits and. Um, with flexible PCBs because you avoid a lot of mechanical problems with them as well. Um, so one, one good example of this is the project I'm, I'm currently working on, um, which is a, a robot that is entirely made from a flexible PCB, um, which is this one here. So. So have you switched uh, almost entirely now to, to flexible PCBs? The, 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 I mean, I still use FR4 PCBs, but I, I'm using it in a lot of, of my projects. So this is a, a project um, that is entirely made from a flexible PCB. Um, sorry for my expression there. But as you can see, it's like a double-decker PCB, this one. Yeah. So. This, so, so it's like it, this is this is kind of like a, a little frog right that jumps yeah that, that's that's the it's it's still um it's i'm i'm st still have a few tests left 
um, on it, but the video I think should come out soon. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, I have some pictures of it, let me show you. No, I don't have any pictures. There is. So this is the PCB, um, bare board PCB. I think they are, let, let me go. Um, That's really cool. Yes. I don't have any more pictures on this. What is it that you have here on the, uh, on top of this uh, board? The, the picture to the, to the left here, the, the one with the this brown one? rings. What is, what are those rings? That, that the back side of the PCB? You're, you're talking about this part here. Um, I don't see your pointer, so I don't know where you're pointing. Um, the, the brown and green thingy? Uh, no, just brown. Uh, just four brown circles. Ah, okay, um, so that, that's where the, the magnets um, are going to be placed, if, if I, I'm guessing correctly. Um, that, I think that, it's, it's quite possible that your screen froze. Um, let me check. I, I, see, I see the picture with tweezers in the middle. Uh, do you see the same? Now, now I can see a pointer. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so which part were you referring to? Uh, I was uh, referring to the picture to, on, on the left, on the previous page. So next one. Yeah, that one. So this, is a, this is a stiffener. So um, for those who don't know, don't know what a stiffener is, it's basically um, a piece of plastic that the PCB manufacturer can add um, to, to make um, flexible PCBs more rigid. So when when you get a PCB, there are three options. Either you get a FAR4 PCB, either a flexi rigid PCB or fully flexible. The flexible, the flexi rigid PCB, um, which I used only in one project, is a very expensive solution. So another um, cheaper alternative is go fully flexible PCB and add stiffeners like this one. So this is basically a very thin piece of plastic that that will um, prevent electronics, uh, electronic components from bending and break the soldering joints basically um, when when bending. Right. So it's kind of like a middle ground between uh, between exactly, having exactly. stiff PCB and and and, and it, it's from the PCB manufacturer um, that I use. It, it's at a zero extra cost. So basically they don't charge you um, for adding these um, um, the stiffeners. And it's PCB way you're using, right? Yes. Right. The, the, they are um, uh, one of my sponsors on my channel. So that's cool. Right. Okay. Awesome. So uh, in terms of control strategy for the motors, uh, you're, using, uh, you're using the six-step commutation right now. Um, have, you, have you been, um, do, do you see any benefits of using uh, maybe field-oriented control or something, uh, something that uh, would allow you to control the current so you don't overheat the motor, for example? Mm -hmm. or, is that, or is that not really necessary when it's a small motor like this? Um, for for the brushless motor, I'm using six-step commutation waveform. Um, for these type of coils, I'm just driving them on and off using an age bridge. Um, so th there are many other control strategies. There, there is the sinusoidal sinusoidal current control um, applic application, which one can use to to drive. Um, brushless motors as well. Um, I, I I still have tested um, the six. I only tested the six-step commutation waveform. So, um, and do you think it works? Um, do you think it has any issues? Um, as as is like you've been testing it for a while. Uh, have you uh, yeah. seen any limitations of it? The, the issue, the since it's it's only a six pole motor, um, the main drawback it has is at low speed. So, at very low speeds, um, 
you will sort of see steps not um not not a, a beautiful sort of rotation um and th that is the main limitation of having less few bolts and the the drawback of driving it with a six step commutation waveform um so if, if you go for example to a sinusoidal control algor algorithm um it, it it will be much smoother right but I still haven't tested that. So, um, but the, my my plan at 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 very low speeds is that, that that's why I, I I'm testing the step the stepper motion motor I showed before, mm -hmm. um, because I think that that will be quite um, quite smooth. Okay. Let's have a look at that stepper motor. Um, what I'm curious about is um, uh, the configuration of the static magnets. So it's similar, uh, you're using only four coils. Um, mm -hmm. And how do you uh, position the static magnets above these coils? So the, 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 the rotor port, I, I still haven't done it yet, but my plan is to only use two magnets. So I'm planning to make like uh, a narrow pointer and have two magnets and try to to rotate it to, to rotate them around okay and how many the, steps would you would you get uh in the, total the, then the driver can support to five six steps i believe but i still have to test if if they it, it can manage to, to do that okay that, that resolution okay so so basically uh we would have to stay tuned for more videos yeah, I'm I'm currently moving to a new lab, so um, things kind of slow down a little on, okay. on the electronic side. So that there will be a video on that too. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, okay, Carl. Um, do you think uh, we have covered everything that that you're doing right now? I Is there so, anything yeah. else we missed? Mm, I think I think we covered everything. Right. So if anybody's interested in uh, hiring you as a freelancer or uh, sort of getting in touch with you, uh, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, they, they can visit either my website, my Instagram or LinkedIn, everything. I mean, I will see all the messages. So, <laughs> Right. You're checking all the messages. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Nice talking to you, Carl. Same um, to you. And um, Really Let's nice. keep in touch. Let's see if uh, there is any more cool technology that emerges out of this. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Have a good weekend. Same to you, Martin. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.